Omagyanatimarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the nectar of instruction at the level of Bhakti Shastri. Right? This is our one, two, three, four, this is our fifth class, right? So we're going on nicely. I hope everyone's keeping up okay. Uh, we were on text number four. Would someone like to recite text number four for us? Who's memorized the text? Have we got some hands up? I'm sure Gita Indulika Maharaj knows. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> she was one of the first ones to raise hands. Let me show the, those who have raised hands. There is all the... Oh, yeah. Okay, let's have somebody who doesn't speak so much. Uh, Ananta Pandit Prabhu. Would you like to recite the verse number four of the Nectar of Instruction? Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, are you going to explain the Kappa? No. Yeah, go ahead, recite. Sorry, Maharaj. Recite, recite the Sanskrit. Oh, it's Sanskrit. Dadati Pritik Grinati. Okay. Membeli dan menerima hadiah sebagai sumbangan. Menerima hadiah sebagai sumbangan. Membuka isi hati secara rahasia. He is saying the translation. Dan memberi persadaan adalah enam tanda cinta kasih kepada antar sesama penyembah. Yeah, but I want you to recite Sanskrit. Yes. Okay, very good. So, I want to ask you, are, are you are you working in a job, Ananda Pandit? Ananda Pandit, do you have a job? Yes, I have. Okay, are you giving 50%? Are you able to give 50% from your work? <laughs> Honestly, I haven't been, have, am, am not able yet. You're not able yet? Partly also because of my consciousness. Okay. Are you giving something? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Yeah, then the, the, the principle of giving 50%, this particularly applies to the, you know, very wealthy person. Someone who is like a big industrialist, you know, with the big business, so then they they have more funds and they're more able to give that kind of charity. 
But even Kolaveka Sridhar was a very small merchant. He was giving 50% to worship Mother Ganga every day. So, you know, people do do it, even though they may be very poor. So it's a, it's a very good principle. It certainly keeps us uh, very simple, <laughs> keeps our living standards down. We don't get too opulent. We live simply and we, it, it, it's a demonstration of faith, strong faith in Krishna when you can give 50%. Rupa Goswami, he did it when he retired. And so maybe you like to wait till you retire, you know, yes, Sa right. save up, right. save up your money. And when you retire, you can divide it. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Okay. Maharaj. Yes. I want to ask you, Maharaj. Yes. Any uh, devotee for now, Maharaj, they have example in each call, they, they give 50% for the Krishna consciousness. Oh, some people give more. They get some. I told you about like Amberish Ford. He gave. 30 million, he, he gave up most of his, he gave nearly all of his wealth away. He gave it all to Krishna. And there's other people also, there's this one man in, in New Delhi, he's a big industrialist, he also gives a lot of money, he's building a lot of temples for Gopal Krishna Goswami. He's very surrendered. So there are devotees who do it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, anybody else like to comment about giving fifty percent? Any peop, anyone has any opinions? How about Gita Indo Lake Maharaji? Gita Indo Lake Maharaji, are you giving? 50, do you give fifty percent? Maharaj, I am not earning, I am a housewife, but my husband uh, is also a devotee and he gives but not 50%. No. No, it, my husband is, actually I am not earning, but my husband gives, but uh, we not, don't give 50%, like we give, uh, uh, periodically we give, in the, we have given in uh, our temple. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we also try to collect funds for our temple also. You collect from other people. You get other people. Yeah, from also we, and also other people also want to try some, some little bit and we give on our behalf also. Yeah, if, if somebody is not, not able to If somebody is not able to give money, then they can give time. They can give yes. the, their time for the service of Krishna. You go and you go and do service for the temple and you go and uh, you can go also and raise funds from other people. Yes. You can do like that. That's nice, but everyone should try to contribute. If you can't, can, if you don't have money, then give your time, mm -hmm. right? Try to contribute some other way. Sometimes people don't have money, they give in kind. You know, the farmer may give some rice, or you know, he may have a herd of cows, he may give milk to the temple. Or he may be growing vegetables, he brings vegetables and flowers to the temple. So, somehow or other we want to try to serve Krishna, offer service to Krishna. Krishna knows the heart. It's not so much what we give, but it's what we don't give. Krishna knows what we're keeping for ourselves. If we're thinking this much for me, that much for Krishna. <laughs> so Krishna knows, he's, he's, he's omniscient, he knows everything. So we have to be, we have to understand whatever we have is given to us by the grace of Krishna. We want to use it for Krishna. Prabhupada didn't enforce it on people. But it's there in the books. You know, I don't remember ever hearing Prabhupada tell people you have to give 
But he did write it in the books. That is there, it's a principle there. And Prabhupada said, everything is in my books. He said, everything I want you to say is in my books. So it's certainly there in the books. So it's an act of surrender, of course. It's surrender. You have to, to, to give so much. It's 50%. Ordinary people, you know, ordinary workers, you don't get paid very much. You usually just manage to get enough to live on. If you've got enough to live on, you're lucky. Some people, they don't even have, they don't have enough to live on. Of course, the, the problems come when you start spending, that you want people to spend so much money, education, sending their children to other parts of the world for education. They will take loans from the bank to send their children overseas for education. And they will, uh, then they want also big homes, they want car, expensive cars. You know, they, we t tend to increase. We, we want to always expand our mode of living, increase it to a higher standard. It's not really necessary all the time. Just simply maintain as we are. Don't be too much anxious for economic development. That way then we can give more time to Krishna. We have more time for serving Krishna. And some people work very hard, even though they're working very hard, doesn't mean they get a lot of money. They can still end up in difficulties. Many people even doing business, they don't have much money. All of their money is in the business and they don't have much money. <laughs> and sometimes the business goes down, they lose everything. So it's important to try to give something, do something for Krishna. If, if you can't give your life, best is to give your life. If you cannot give your life, then give some of your hard-earned money. If you don't have money, then give some of your time. Use your energy and use your intelligence to think how to serve Krishna. And if you say, well, I don't have a good brain either, I'm very stupid, then simply chant Hare Krishna. Everyone can chant Hare Krishna. And in that way, do service for Krishna. All right, so we spoke about the Dadati principle. We will ask Omkar. We will ask, is it Omkar? Oh no, Dhritatma. Dhritatma Prabhu. We will ask Dhritatma Prabhu, what is the Dadati principle? which is most convenient, most encouraged for devotees in Krishna Consciousness. Dhritatma Prabhu, can you tell us? I can't hear you, I think you're unmuted, you're still muted. I'm not hearing anything. Okay. Yeah, we see me. Contohnya, yeah. So here, the example uh, of uh, giving and receiving uh, gifts. Uh, one of the example is food for life. No. Well, okay, but that's something. Yeah, you may like to do. But there's a, there's a better program than just giving food. Something even more powerful than just giving food. What, what is that principle which is most encouraged, yeah, most... Con uh, uh -huh. According 
uh, according to myself, uh, giving the knowledge of Krishna to those who, uh, who need the, the, the knowledge or to friends who are sympathizing, who are uh, interested. Mm, okay, but there's something better, even better than your words. You're, you're giving knowledge. There's something even more powerful. That would be, right, the Yuga Dharma. So giving, uh, explaining uh, also about the experience of bhakti to others. Yeah. But there's something more powerful. We want to encourage more, even something more than just simply giving that. Yes, right. Yeah, giving the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra to others. Right, that's right. This is the point. This is the real dadati that we want to encourage. Give the holy name to everyone wherever we go. We want to have nice sankirtan and let people hear the holy name. It's very important. This, this is the Yuga Dharma. Prabhupada encouraged us. Go for sankirtan. Take the holy name. Every town and village, every street, loud, melodious chanting. Organize nice sankirtan festivals and let everybody hear the holy name. That is the greatest charity. Lord Ch the, it's, in the purport it's described, Lord Chaitanya asked Haridas Thakur, how to benefit living entities lower than humans? What did Haridas say? Does someone know? Can we see some hands? What did Haridas Thakur reply to Lord Chaitanya? It, yes, we will hear from uh, Shopasham Maharaji. She will tell us. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, when Lord Chaitanya asked Haridas Thakur how other living entities, lower living entities could be delivered, Haridas Thakur said the chanting of the holy names is so powerful that even if somebody chants in the jungles or remote parts, the trees, the animals, they all get benefited by just hearing the vibration of the holy name. Right. Do we have an example of this? Oh, well, when Ch Lord Chaitanya himself, when he was going through the Jarikan forest, he made the animals chant. Right. Yes. Thank you. So the chanting of the holy name, this is the dadati principle, which is very easy for all of us to perform. We don't need to be wealthy, we don't need to have, you know, we just need to be willing to go and chant. And we can go anywhere and give the holy name. Chanting is very important, very powerful, right? So dadati and then pratigrinati. And we spoke about pratigrinati, that it's difficult sometimes, right? What's the problem? Who would like to tell us about this? What's the problem with receiving? Girid Hari Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, yes, Danda Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. So I've noted some of your explanation about Pratigrihnati yesterday that unless one become advanced in Krishna consciousness, so one must be very careful in accepting gift because or money because it is all Krishna's property and it should be not used for our sense gratification. Okay. That's what I remember, Maharaj. Right. Should not be used, not one cent for our well, sense gratification. Cent, yes. Right? That's all meant for the service of Krishna. So unless one is very advanced, 
one doesn't really know how to utilize these things in the service of Krishna. So within ISKCON, we have the principle that when we go out for preaching work, whatever donations are received, they are for the service of the Krishna Conscious Society, not for our own self, right? With devotees, somebody's a devotee, they, whatever they have is for the service of Krishna, not for their own sense gratification. So we're warned about that. And Prabhupada particularly warns how money and the opposite sex can create problems. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but the, it's just we have to be very careful about how we use them. We have to use everything very cautiously, understanding it's meant for Krishna's service. So the Krishna Consciousness Movement tries to control these things. Just like money, we don't have money in one person's account, the temple funds will be in, there will be several, two or three signers for the bank account, things like that. In sannyasis, they give financial reports, you know, how many donations were received and where the money went, these kind of things. Okay, so dadati pratigrinati, right? Now, uh, one thing we want to talk about, well, we, we spoke about how, how much success has ISKCON had in these loving exchanges. We, were, we took some feedback last night. We didn't get a lot of time to hear many people. Did anyone like to... Anyone like to respond to that? Does anyone have any particular uh, important feelings or uh, maybe something they're not satisfied with or some, or some great success which ISKCON has had in promoting these loving exchanges? Anybody like to speak? Mm -hmm. Huh? Really? Okay, Gita into Lake Amadeji, you can tell us what you think about this loving exchanges in ISKCON. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanva Pranam. Maharaj, uh, I have heard that uh, in uh, Ukraine, 450 devotees are serving in the temple and without any payment. In, in There is a Sri Radha Mata temple over there and 450 devotees are serving there without any payment. So there are very practical results. If the, this the principle of six loving exchanges is is there in ISKCON, and we should realize its importance, and I feel that there should be a for this there should be many things to, should be done, like there should be devotee care department, and we should be very careful when in the temple also, like we should pay attention to all the devotees. If some uh, devotees not like clapping in in kirtan, in kirtan, then we, we should see. This it's all like an investment. If we uh, uh, pay some time to devotees who are coming to the temple, and uh, everybody should be get prasadam, and uh, even uh, even uh, every, even if some new guest from the temple, that sh that person should be given some like garland or some uh, like some uh, leaflet, like some small gift. So we should uh, uh, encourage the devotees like this, and uh, even. Uh, uh, in our temple, it is, it is not very regular, but there is a very good thing that is being done that they call the devotees on their birthdays and anniversary and call them uh, call them to death so that they they can do art, perform art over there, the deities, art of the deities. So uh, these things should be done, I think, and many more things like we can form committees of Vaishnavis committees and of the children also group so that they can means. Uh, they can uh, make groups and uh, they can uh, get together and uh, it, it will increase our like uh, their motivation also and uh, they will think that this temple is theirs uh, like they don't feel like they are a guest over there they feel this temple is there so they can serve the temple very properly okay very nice thank you very much i appreciate these points interesting 
Yeah, we heard how Prabhupada wrote a letter to all the temples and he wanted prasadam had to be available for everyone. Do your temples all have that facility? We'll ask some of the devotees if your temple has that kind of facility. Let me see. What about Mahara, Mah, 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 Maharani? Yeah, Maharani Maharaji, do you have do you have that facility in your temple? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, um, I'm sorry, I was focused on the previous question when you asked about the six of the exchanges, so I wasn't paying attention when you asked that one. So I just wanted to um, make a point about the um, you know, just to tell this very small story of 10 years ago when I was very sick in India and I had to go to hospital. I was in Bhaktivedanta Hospital. I was very ill. It was during Kartik for one week. And um, I uh, every day the devotee care committee would, uh, team would come around and spend time with me. And they would bring a beautiful altar of Lord Jagannath and they would allow me to offer a lamp to the Lord every day. I didn't have to leave the room and uh, listening to Prabhupada over the speaker system. And I just always remember that as um, a time of feeling great, great, great care among devotees. So um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the other question, I'm just, can you please repeat it? Because I'm sorry, I forgot it. Okay, I was asking about uh, if, if your temple arranges for prasadam distribution for guests when they come there to your temple. Do you have prasadam available uh -huh. for people regularly? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we actually live on the west coast of Ireland, so we don't live near any temple. We are like three, four hours away, so we've had to do everything alone here when we're here. And um, we run a little um, uh, prasadam business at the market at the weekend. We've been doing it for 22 years now. And um, so over the years, we had different programs in our house, and we did uh, uh, distribute prasadam more. But usually what we do is we cook extra, my husband will cook extra and just give out to people, you know, for not, not uh, for free. So that uh, when we have, you know, we sell some and then we make some money to live on. And then he always has extra for people that are coming and they come regularly. So that's what we've been doing just here uh, on our own. What kind of prasadam do you sell? Is it sweet balls? Well, we, uh, yeah, we're doing the same thing for 20 yeah, kitchery, kitchery, uh, matter paneer, matter paneer, uh, samosas, and uh, tomato chutney, and pineapple chutney, and ladu. And it's the same menu, 22 years, same thing, yeah. Oh my we, everybody seems to want, especially matter paneer, they want, and samosas. So, oh, it's a whole yeah, meal? You it give went a, very well. You're selling a whole meal started. then? It's a whole meal you're selling, not items, not individual items, but a whole meal. Yeah. It's, 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 Mm -hmm. Yes, well, exactly. It's, it's, um, we just sell, you know, they come and they ask for one portion of samosas or one portion of kitchery, and uh, we could maintain that. We can only maintain very little because we have small little stall. So that's uh, it just continued for 20 years now, and um, we were very grateful because we were able to go to India and uh, go on pilgrimage and continue here. So, um, except for the lockdown, they locked us down for the first in March, April, May. But um, let us go again now for a little while. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, yeah we, we, that's what we do. Okay, very nice. Thank you very much. But what about the, the big temple over there uh, in Israel? Would they have prasadam? The guests come there? Yeah, okay, they have yeah, in Israel. Oh, God, I said. Yeah, I say they have been, they're across the border, you know, they're in North Ireland, so um, right now there's a complete lockdown, you cannot go back and forth, so, um, but they have always had, always had, uh, you know, big prasadam distribution, and also people are coming on the boats, you know, because it's right on the shan, on the, on the lake, so they come down, visitors coming every day, constantly all summer, and they have big programs constantly when there's no lockdown, like every Sunday they have Sunday feast, um, we used to live there like over 20 years ago, we lived there for two years, so um, people were coming, we have constant um, paternal distribution. And also in Dublin, we have a restaurant, so we have constant paternal distribution as well. Even during the autumn, I think they're doing takeaways for people. Uh, okay, for, very nice. Thank you very much. Very courteous. Uh, free paternal distribution on Sundays. They invite people to come and just take paternal home with them. 
So there's, there's a lot, yeah. The ones are doing a lot, and it's very difficult, so it's great. They're doing a lot, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, we'll just hear from one more person. Oh, Bankim Govinda Das Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Dandabad Pranam. So uh, we are from uh, Muscat. This is in Middle East. So here it's, it's a temple. We don't have an official temple here, registered temple. And here the, uh, it's in a little uh, restricted way where everything is done. So prasad and distribution, all these outdoor activities can't be done here in the Middle East. So we focus more on preaching. So uh, recently uh, our Yatra leader various uh, devotees. And by that way we managed to uh, get around uh, 250 children from a school who are following the syllabus of uh, Chinmayananda and the mission on Bhagavad Gita? Say, and these devo these first these members, uh, so these, I mean, uh, who attended were the principal of the school, and she simply ch changed from. Wow. Yeah. Very good. So so sorry, it got muted. So that was the, uh, the how powerful teachings of Prabhupada was. So she she was simply amazed by the teachings of Prabhupada. So she you now she changed the syllabus and uh, she asked us to uh, teach their children, which is from first standard to tenth standard children. So almost 250 children have enrolled, and so we as a team of six teachers are doing this for a week. So the point what I'm saying is we are focusing more on preaching as we can't do outdoor activities. Wonderful. In yeah, in addition, we also manage the Gurukul for children, which has got additional 200 children. This is exclusive in Muscat. The Chinmaya people must have been furious with you. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, I mean, it's Krishna's plan, so... <laughs> okay, very good. Wonderful. Wonderful preaching. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, let's go back now. I want to go to the... the, the share the screen, all right? I'll share the screen. Yes. Okay. The desktop. There's the desktop. Yeah. Another desktop. Put this yeah. on. Let me see. I've got a PowerPoint somewhere. Where is it? What's that? Is it? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Mm. Up here. Slideshow. Slideshow. And then from current slide. Thank you. Okay, is everybody seeing this slide here? Yes, my Okay, good. So, warning about the uh, collecting of money and how to use it. So, if you get money, print books. So we've spoke about ISKCON success, success in facilitating loving exchange. We hope it will continue to grow. We want to continue these kind of activities, certainly. Uh, something, th this is a little exercise we just want to take a little while to hear from you about. And, and just to read it out to you. Just take a few minutes to reflect on situations from your devotional career in which you felt nourished by one or more of the six loving exchanges or in which you felt starved. Affection between devotees decreased by exchanges that could have been within the realm of these six loving exchanges but unfortunately weren't. We just heard one actually from uh, Maharani Mataji. Yeah, she was telling us about when she was in the hospital, in Bhaktivedanta Hospital, and how the devotees came and were so caring and concerned for her, looking after her. That was a very nice, loving exchange. And we hope that, uh, you know, we can learn from both. We learn from the, the loving exchange. We can also learn from the exchanges which were not so loving, which were, uh, in which we felt starved. 
and we can learn to avoid these kind of situations. So if you've had that kind of experience, I would like to hear about it from you. Would anybody like to volunteer, tell us about one kind of a situation which they were in, where they felt particularly starved in the dealings be with, between devotees? It's a little difficult for us. You may, some, you know, some of you have your two people at home, husband and wife, like that. A bit difficult for us to have partners. But maybe you can just reflect on your own. And if you'd have some realization, it would be nice to hear. Help us to improve our how to how to associate learn how to associate nicely. And do we have any volunteers? Swarup Krishna Prabhu, would you like to tell us your experience? Dhanwath um, Maharaj, um, uh, we have focused on the new devotees who uh, joined the movement and uh, who are uh, uh, new to the system because they need a lot of care, they expect a lot of respect themselves and uh, um, they expect uh, a lot of hand-holding and in such situations we need to uh, not only talk to them, relate to them, uh, um, solve the questions that they have in their mind, um, maybe have some uh, excuses initially, still uh, be very kind to them. That's, that's the way uh, we have been uh, like handling them. We, we, we used to conduct, uh, obviously before this lockdown period, Rath Yatras and uh, we used to get uh, these new devotees who would show their interest and uh, we would be very, uh, we would uh, relate to them. This is the way we have, we have been uh, like, uh, growing in our, uh, in our center and uh, uh, we have been having lot of uh, new devotees coming in and the, the, the beauty part of it is uh, when, I mean, which uh, you, you should touch uh, our heart is the transformation that happens in them, the course of time and how uh, they, uh, they get cultivated and uh, they also to know about the various uh, um, practices uh, of ISKCON, they start participating in uh, um, Nitya Seva. Nitya Seva means daily uh, um, uh, sharing their wealth um, uh, for some of the events of the, of the center, then uh, book distribution, obviously Prasadam distribution, also Vaishnava Seva also. And in the course of time, they commit themselves to uh, uh, the um, holy name, uh, the um, 16 rounds. We have seen devotees initially who would be shying away from uh, even uh, taking up, uh, say, four rounds a day, putting themselves to four rounds a day. Suddenly, one fine morning, they say, hey, uh, Puji Mataji, we have uh, um, uh, reached 16 rounds and we have uh, uh, left... Uh, uh, we have become, uh, we, we have started uh, uh, offering to the Lord and we have started taking prasada. And in the course of time, they have also committed themselves to um, get initiated. So these are some transformations we have seen uh, in, and uh, all based on um, collective loving exchanges. Okay, thank you very much, Prabhu. Where is this, actually? Which place? Um, we have been preaching in Kolkata. In Kalkara. Okay, very yeah. okay, very nice. Very good. We have some other Oh really? Can somebody offer a negative uh, somebody had a, some difficulties, uh, you kind of uh, a situation in which they felt starved? Did somebody Dinavat Sao Prabhu?
uh, a not pleasant experience regarding this uh, exchange. Someone who's a, so so like a senior devotee when uh, uh, correcting a devotee, but without a a loving mood of of telling or correcting. So not by not by uh, talking nicely with the devotee, but directly blaming. Okay. It happens uh -huh. uh, between the devotees also. Oh, some problem in dealing interactions between devotees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, maybe that's a little bit so. Uh, uh, so he basically he's saying that uh, uh, some senior devotees, when they correct a, a junior devotee, they do it not not in a loving mood. Yes, that could be the one problem. We have to be a little <laughs> detached, you know. The problem, our false ego, doesn't like it sometimes. So dealing with each other, personal dealings, and it's it's not an easy situation. Some people they're in, they have a lot of stress. Maybe they're in charge of something, maybe supervising something, and they feel pressured. And sometimes they, their passion overcomes them, and they speak in an unpleasant manner. So this is something which we definitely want to try to avoid. We want to try uh, we also when it happens to us we have to try to be a little uh, detached also and tolerant and not let our false ego become too disturbed so the two sides to it you know, better nice it's better if we can speak in a, a nice way and if, it, if somebody is not speaking so friendly to us don't take them too seriously but Try to appreciate the difficulty that maybe the situation which they're in is troublesome for them and try to be tolerant. Now many of you have got your hands up. We don't have a lot of time. We want to go on. But we'll just take one more person, Prabhu. Manishi Das, Jyoti Radha Mataji. Manishi Das and Jyoti Radhi. Manishi Das and partner. Yes, Prabhu. Saya mau sharing pengalaman yatra saya ke Brindawan. Saat itu saya diundang oleh seorang penyembah. Ya, ada jelas seorang penyembah. So, I... Dan beberapa pesan itu saya bawa dan setelah beranjak dari rumah para penyembah penyembah itu, Uh, saya ketemu dengan seorang uh, penyembah. Di situ saya ingin memberikan persad ini juga. Namun penyembah ini menolak persad itu dan menanyakan kepada saya, kamu dapat uh, persad ini di mana? Dan saya menjawab, uh, uh, saya telah diberikan oleh seorang penyembah uh, di, belak di belakang tempel ini, saya bilang. Uh, yang ingin saya tanyakan karena mereka semua adalah iskon dipoti karena mereka adalah semua pemimpin dan apa uh, semua keluarga kita apakah hal-hal ini memang terjadi di iskon ya yang menolak jadi tidak sesuai dengan bonte bojayate caiwa jadi apakah ini uh, apa yang yang karena ada yang uh, karena penyembah itu menolak 
pesan yang diberikan oleh penyemak kita sendiri. Nah itu yang ingin saya tanyakan ke Mas. So he he wants to share one of his experience when he went to Rindawan one time and he received prasadam from a devotee. Uh, and then uh, when he went to a place of another devotee, uh, so, so he received from an ISKCON devotee, and then he went to to another devotee's place, also an ISKCON devotee, and he would like to share the prasadam that he has received, but the devotee refused, uh, did not want to receive the prasadam that he, he had with him. Uh, Although both, uh, all of, although all of us are iskon devotees, uh, uh, does that really happen? Like, is that is that something common, or is it just uh, one one uh, only his uh, particular experience like that? <laughs> well, I, well, I don't know. It, it may have been. <laughs> Dia hanya menjawab kita harus tahu pasti uh, siapa yang mengasih persari ini dan kita harus tahu uh, secara detail orang ini bagaimana dananya uh, dia ada semua kita positifnya tahu kalau kita tidak tahu baru kita berani makan seperti itu uh, jawabannya. Ya, yeah, so the the devotee who refused when refusing he asked uh, from whom you got this prasadam. Uh, so he just said that. The, uh, I received this prasadam from that devotee uh, 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 in the back of the temple like that and the devotee who refused said that we have to know uh, in detail who who give this prasadam, his sadhana and so uh, anything like that then we we are safe to receive that prasadam so that's the answer from that devotee and so he that, that made him question about this situation okay Yeah, I don't know. I'm not familiar with that kind of situation, but certainly it's unusual. I've never heard like that before. Okay, so I'm sure we can all appreciate the importance of the loving exchange. The loving exchanges are very important, you know, if we can have a nice loving exchange with the devotees. that. Prabhu is just saying, you know, some people are more particular about the prasadam, who made it, who gave it. <laughs> Others are not so particular, you know, we just like prasadam is prasadam is absolute and we want to relish the taste of the prasadam. So we try to distribute prasadam as much as we can. So we, just to review what we covered in this lesson, we talked about love of Krishna being in everyone's heart. And we encourage the distribution of Krishna consciousness to everyone, all living entities. We spoke about the, the Dadati principle, giving 50%. And we've discussed also qualification to utilize people's contribution. This Pratikrinati principle, accepting contributions. We have to be very careful and make sure it's to further the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And we've been discussing about how successful ISKCON has been in trying to facilitate this loving exchange. There are always difficulties. It's not an easy thing to please people. Some people are very particular, very sensitive. But we have to try, try our best, right? We try to develop this sadvidam priti lakshana. The loving exchange, six types of loving exchange. A nice quote here from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Exchanging love with devotees who are of the same aspiration as oneself and who are affectionate to oneself enhances one's bhakti. Offering and accepting items, revealing confidential realization to one another and serving and accepting food are all activities that increase affection. One should not perform these activities with those of different aspirations in life than one's own. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati's quote. 
All right. So we're going to complete that uh, and we'll go on to the next lesson, which is based on text number five. Would someone like to read text number five for us? <laughs> Who can chant nice Sanskrit? Mm, oh. Tukaram Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maradam. Maraskari. Yes, please. The Sanskrit. Krishna Kriyasya Giritam Mansadri Eta. Vivo. Dari Parvati. Bala, Vivo. Tukaram Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, are you going to chant for us? Yes, Maharaj. Krishna Tiyasya Giritam Mansadri Eta Diksha Sti Jetis Pranati Bhishya Bhajanta Misham Pusu Shaya Bhajana Bhigya Manyam Anya Nindadi Shunyam Pradayam Ipsita Sangha Oh, probably I'm having a problem here. My computer. What? What's going on? Do? You are. Um, is the slide show? Yeah. Right. Okay. Was that the first slide? Yes. Yeah. So skip the can... first slide. Okay. Right. And then you can again go to slide show over there. Go to slide show. Yes. Oh, what happened? Can you do alt tab? Hmm. I think you can just play from current slide here. Yeah. And then press space. Space? I think you have an animation, that's why. Yeah, there's an... A clip. Have to click again? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it was coming. Also, just a kind note, I think uh, there are some devotees who have asked some questions, maybe you could address that in the end. Alright, yes, if you have questions, we'll take them at the end. Let's go so ahead. Just, just put it up in the chat, so yeah, I just... No, this, this is, it should be about Kanista and Madhyaman. I oh. see. Maybe this is a different slide that then. Maybe I've got it wrong. I don't know. Let's go to the folder again. Go to folder again. It's here. Yes. You have lesson six. That's the only slide. Oh, that, it should be lesson five, five yeah. or four even. Right, so if you go back. Uh, yes. Lesson four is there. We did lesson three, it should be four. Yeah. There is no lesson five though. Really? That is, uh, yes, that's the PowerPoint. Okay, that looks like a new one. This is the one, yeah. Thank you, Prima. All right, so we're going ahead. Uh, lesson four, attitudes towards devotees. This will be based on text five and then later on go into text six. Okay, so text five was dealing with devotees, how to relate to devotees, because we've heard about different loving exchanges. Hare Krishna, can everyone see the slide? 
Can we see the slide now? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. We can, uh, we can see the slide. Play from the start. Play from the start. Yeah, the good slide. Okay. Attitudes towards the bodies. Text 5, first of all. Krishnati yasya giritam adhisadriyeta dikshasti chetran tibischa bhajantam isham. Like that. One should mentally, mentally honor the devotee who chants the holy name. One should offer respects to one who has undergone spiritual initiation and who is engaged in worshipping the deity. And one should associate with and faithfully serve a devotee who is fixed in undeviating devotional service and is free of the propensity to criticize others. Okay. So, from text 5 purport, Srila Prabhupada describes three levels of Vaishnavas. In order to intelligently apply the sixfold loving reciprocations mentioned in the previous verse, one must select proper persons with careful discrimination. Srila Rupa Goswami, therefore, advises that we should meet with the Vaishnavas in an appropriate way, according to their particular status. In this verse, he tells us how to deal with three types of devotees. Kanista Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari and Uttama Adhikari. Right? So three levels of Vaishnavas. We're going to look at these three levels. We want to understand properly. From the Waves of Devotion. Waves of Devotion is a book published by Srila Prabhupada's disciple, His Holiness Dhanur Swami, which describes many interesting features not so obvious from the nectar of devotion, but it helps to enrich our understanding of Srila Prabhupada's nectar of devotion. So here's the quote, the impetus for Vaidhi Bhakti, Vaidhi Bhakti is scriptural injunction. It means rules and regulations, that's Vaidhi Bhakti. Therefore, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the depth of one's faith in and knowledge of the scriptures determines one's eligibility to advance and places him in one of three classes of candidates. So, he is describing here one's position as Kanista, Madhyam or Uttama will depend on two things, will depend on one's faith and also, will depend also on one's knowledge. One may be Uttama in terms of faith but he may not be Uttama in terms of knowledge. Hmm. So there's two aspects there in determining person's position as a Uttama, Kanista, or Madhya. First of all, we look at the Kanista. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu describes how the Kanista, the junior devotee, who would like to say what is the, what kind of qualification, what will the Kanista devotee be like in terms of knowledge? Someone would like to offer? Has he got good knowledge or? Roshan Pradhan. Roshan Pradhan Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Uh, Kanishta Adhikari, 
is one who is a beginner in Krishna consciousness, who has very less knowledge about Krishna. Okay, has less knowledge. What about his faith? Uh, he's beginning. He's a beginner, so his faith can be like uh, he's in like he's a beginner, so his faith can be gone with small, uh, small mistakes or some small mistake, or he, he may have some personal ego. Like if somebody says something wrong to him, he may take it seriously. Yes, right. Yeah, so his faith is shaky, right? Not, yes, not, not very. I, I mean, yeah. Right, his faith is shaky, and in terms of knowledge, you know, he doesn't have much knowledge. He's a new man, right? But you know, not all kanistas are new devotees. Don't think just because it, don't don't think everybody's a kanista just because they're new. Someone may be kanista and may be a devotee quite a long time. He just may not have a, a, a progressed. What do you think would be the problem? Why is he still Kanista? It may be because he's not uh, chanting properly, or he may he may not be having an association of proper association of devotee, or it may be due to his personal ego. Yes, right. Could be personal ego problem. It could be, as you said, not chanting properly. Could also be, it's not reading the books carefully. Definitely not. Not hearing the philosophy carefully. But what do they usually do? Kanista is usually what, how is he engaged? Generally, we think of the Kanista that he's very much absorbed in. How does he see God? Somebody can help him? He is very. Narayani Maharaji? Narayani Maharaji? Yes. How does uh, the Kanista Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, uh, about uh, Kanista Adhikari, so uh, this level is uh, so engaged in uh, pray to deities uh, in the temple, and uh, because uh, he or her is Kanista Adhikari, so uh, they just engage to the deities, but uh, do not how to react or relate uh, the relationship with another devotees or to common people like them. Thank you, Hare Krishna, Dhanurakrana, Hare Okay, yes. Right, the Kanista generally, they see God in the deity, but they don't have that same vision when they see other devotees, even. They may not be you know, they don't have to be, just be in the temple. They may be actually serving the deity. They may even be the pujari. You don't know. But he may have that kind of conception that he only sees God in the deity. And he doesn't see God within the heart of other living entities. So, anyway, uh, talking about their faith and their knowledge, let's um, show that. Okay, so three levels. Here you can see, first of all, that the, for the Kanista, in terms of faith, he has weak faith, easily swayed, right? And in terms of knowledge, uh, he, 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 he's... Uh, He can't offer arguments to oppose opinions. It's weak knowledge. So somebody comes, comes and argues, and he can't, he can't defeat them. 
he doesn't know what to say. Somebody comes and tells him, you know, you're vegetarian, you're, you're foolish, you won't be healthy, you'll get sick. You know, vegetarian, it's not good. It's, they'll t and they, or they tell him, you're worshipping idols, you're worshipping some statue. He doesn't know how to deal with these kind of things. He's not trained in the philosophy. He hasn't read much, doesn't know very much. But he may be, somehow he's a devotee, he's there, he's in the temple and he's doing service. So if he does service with a good mood, there's some hope for him. The, the only problem may come that he may offend a devotee. He may be critical of devotees because he doesn't have much knowledge. So he doesn't know how to relate properly with devotees. Okay, we'll go ahead to the Madhyam. Who would like to tell us about the Madhyam devotee? Hmm? Really? Come on, there must be more people now. We want to know about the Madhyam devotee in terms of knowledge and faith. Who can offer some? Marosh Parika. Huh? Marosh Parika, Sanatan Krishna. Sanatan Krishna. Sanatan. Yes, Prabhu. Tell me about the Madhyam devotee. What kind of faith does he have? So, Madhyam Adhikari devotees. Uh, have a slightly advanced level of faith where you can say it's, it's it is fixed level of faith because their sadhana is uh, uh, like they have a proper sadhana schedule and they've been practicing for a long time I mean as you said like sometimes even people who have practiced for a long time can be kanishta but in this case they have a steady practice uh, they have firm faith they are able to inspire other devotees also to uh, practice Krishna Consciousness because their practice is at uh, a stage where others get inspired by seeing their activities as well. So they are able to influence other devotees to practice and inspire them as well. Okay. So first of all, the Madhyama devotee, his faith will be quite strong, right? Yes, Maharaj. Right? Yeah. He's got, he's got faith, that's one thing. He's convinced. We say he's convinced, right? He's, because, he's got strong faith. And then what about knowledge? Can he, how does he manage with other people, with arguments? Uh, I think he can uh, definitely, uh, he has, since he has strong faith and is convinced, he has the ability and the knowledge uh, because of his practice to convince other devotees. Uh, with arguments uh, from Shastra and uh, basically uh, put forth the philosophy in the right manner. Okay, like that, yeah, he, he, has, he has good knowledge, but he cannot always defeat others. He's not always able to convince others. Although he himself has knowledge, he knows the philosophy, but he's not always so expert in presenting it. It's, it's like that. He's a Madhyama devotee. He's on the Madhyama level. But when we look at the Uttama level, Uttama Adhikari, right? Who's going to tell us about the Uttama Adhikari? Valmiki, Valmiki Prabhu can tell us about the Uttama Adhikari in terms of faith and devotion. Valmiki? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, so, in, in my knowledge, uh, Uttama Adhikari is very, is actually 
most advanced uh, devotee and he is able to see Krishna everywhere and his faith is uh, very strong and he he can convince everybody to Krishna consciousness and uh, you know uh, he's uh, very expert in Shastras and he can explain Shastra very nicely so this first cl first class devotee actually okay so in terms of faith he has very strong faith right very strong yes sure and he's convinced and he can convince others also right and in terms of knowledge knowledge is not his knowledge is uh, perfect actually yes he understood uh, philosophy uh, perfectly yeah he can defeat others people come with other their own opinions he can defeat them he can give the shastric conclusion he can speak according to parampara okay thank you very much prabhu very nice so here you see the different gradations now people may be a mixture you know it's not so cut and dry Oh, this person's Kanista, oh, that person's Madhyam, this one's Uttama. You know, people, we can be very mixed. One day, you know, one minute you may be on the Kanista platform, next minute you may be on the Uttama platform. <laughs> so, different classes anyway, different levels of devotees. We want to understand what makes a difference in terms of faith and in terms of knowledge. These two things will determine position. Faith, described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, this is faith. Yeah, if you have children there, please try to mute your mic. And uh, faith is described there, famous verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita, definition is given here. Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Kama Kritahai. That simply by serving Krishna, then one can fulfill all kinds of obligations when all duties are performed simply by serving Krishna so one has that kind of conviction that kind of faith that simply by serving Krishna he's fulfilling all other duties everything is being achieved that is firm faith that is the topmost faith so we want to try to develop that kind of faith. How do, you do the, how do you develop faith? Who would like to suggest? How can we increase our faith if we don't have very strong faith or my faith is weak? How can we get stronger faith? Someone can say? You have many hands. Many hands? Ananta Vijay Prabhu. Ananta Vijay Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, so, I will try to speak English that uh, how we can uh, uh, have a strong faith is uh, by hearing an association with uh, this uh, pure devotee. Then we hear from him then uh, the faith will be more strong and stronger by oh. the association, Maharaj. By association, yes, you're very right, exactly. By association. If we associate with people who have faith, that will, that's the best way. And as Prabhu also said, if we hear from the pure devotees, that will also give us strong faith. So we encourage people, read the books, read Prabhupada's books, and associate with devotees who are convinced to have strong faith that will help us just like in the bhagavad gita arjuna says to krishna sarvamita dritam manye yamam vadasi keshava i totally accept this truth all that you have told me so that that is strong faith right we want to have develop that kind of faith very important we got to have faith here, Srimad Bhagavatam, quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, a devotee is considered superlative, superior 
according to his attachment and love. Right? So he, we spoke about faith and knowledge. Here they're speaking about attachment and love. So that can make the difference between Madhyam and Uttama. Srimad Bhagavatam describes how devotees on different levels will see different things. Right? We spoke about the Kanista. How does the Kanista see everything? Where, what's the vision of the Kanista? The Kanista is described here, the Prakrita Bhakta. Prakrita Bhakta. What's the meaning? Sanatan Krishna. Prakrita, Prakrita Bhakta. What's the meaning? Prakrita Bhakta. I. I'm not sure. Maharaj. Sorry. I, I. I guess I forgot to lower my hand down. Do you know the vision of what is the vision of a Kanista Adhikari? I mean, the vision of a Kanista Adhikari is very limited in the sense that he. Uh, like, my vision in the sense, uh, is there anything specific in terms of vision you're asking? Yes. How does he see? How does he see the, the Krishna, for example? How does he see Krishna? Uh, his vision of Krishna could be just what uh, he reads and it's not a very personal connection as such. I'm sorry, I, I No, guess. you don't know this, no. Yeah, yeah, no. Is somebody else? Many devotees. Yeah, Valmiki Valmiki Prabhu, yeah? Valmiki? Yes, Maharaj, uh, sorry. I... Uh, he, is, uh, he is materialistic uh, uh, devotee. Yes, and what's his vision? How does he see Krishna? You see Krishna. Um, you see Krishna like uh, uh, more than a devotee around him. You know he he is uh, trying to worship Krishna, but he is not. Uh, uh, he have no. He has no uh, good relationship with other devotees. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. There's a little bit more important point. Someone else. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, I think uh, this uh, Fokanista uh, devotee, he sees only Krishna in the temple only. Right, right. That's uh, the point. Not, uh, no, uh, Krishna is there, not outside like that. And also he cannot give respect to devotee. Right. Krishna, but okay. He just giving respect to Krishna only. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. He only sees he sees Krishna only in the deity. Uh, he's only he's thinking Krishna's in the deity. He doesn't see Krishna in the heart of all living entities. Now in Srimad Bhagavatam, if you read the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, teachings of Lord Kapila, Lord Kapila describes if you worship the deity like that. It's, it's, it's not good at all. It's not appreciated. This is like if you if you offer. It's like offering ghee on, onto ashes. It, this kind of worship is not appreciated. You just simply see Krishna in the deity, and you don't have proper concern or respect for people. You, we don't see Krishna in the hearts of the other, all the living entities, not even the devotees. So that's the Kanista vision mentioned here. Kanista, therefore, is described as Bhakta Prakrita or Prakrita Bhakta, materialistic devotee. That he is on the lower platform. So described here from Srimad Bhagavatam. He doesn't he doesn't study the scriptures enough. So therefore, he doesn't really understand what is pure devotional service. And he doesn't know how to respect devotees, 
but he may follow, he'll be following the regulative principles and he had, he's initiated, he's worshipping the deity, he's, he's got some good qualities, you know, he's worshipping the deity, he's initiated and he loves the deity, he's really dedicated to the deity, but he just hasn't, he hasn't made an effort to really understand the philosophy. So the per he's described like that. Bhakta Praya, an, a neophyte devotee, because he is only a little enlightened in Vaishnava philosophy. All right. Another quote, Madhvacharya <laughs> says, Kanista has no idea that the Lord has the power to exist outside the temple. <laughs> Puffed up by his own worship, Kanista Adhikari cannot imagine anyone is more religious than he. He's thinking, because I worship the deity, I'm very important, I'm very great devotee. But he's not aware that other devotees are more advanced. He can't understand the Madhyam or the Uttama devotees. He's thinking, oh, who are these people? And sometimes, because of false pride, he may criticize his advanced devotees. Simply, he has no understanding of their exalted position as preachers. Another symptom is he is infatuated by the material qualifications of so-called great materialistic people. So he has a bodily conception of life. Although he worships a deity, he's still in the bodily conception of life. He sees devotional service as just part of the religious aspect of life. But he thinks there's many other things in life. <laughs> he's not completely devoted. <laughs> he's not in the mood of pure devotion. He has many other interests. It's just like somebody is, you know, I'm up the karma, he may be a, a brahmana worshipping the deity, but it's just a job for him. He goes home at night, doesn't think about Krishna, doesn't think about the deity. You go to work and worship the deity, go home at night, forget the deity, you know, never chant the holy name, like that. But, you know, somebody, they have some attachment, they have some devotion, because they're Somehow they're fortunate that they're brought to worship the deity. So on, on the higher level, we come to the, the intermediate devotee, right? The Madhyama. What's the vision of the Madhyama devotee? Can we have some volunteer tell us about the Madhyama devotee? Yes, who have we got? Dakshinarani Mataji, Dakshinarani Mataji, what's the vision of the Madhyama devotee? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Um, for Madhyama devotee, he has uh, strong faith in uh, devotion in Krishna and he can discriminate between the devotees. He can see the difference uh, of, among the devotee and uh, act accordingly. Like when to the new devotee or new fight, he will show compassion and respect them. And to the one in the same level, they, he will develop friendship. And to the pure or utama uh, devotee or utama adhikari, he will uh, serve and associate with them. Okay. So, uh, how does he see the Supreme Lord? He sees the Supreme Lord not only in the temple, but uh, he can see also that uh, other devotee also uh, have, uh, he, he can start to see the uh, Krishna in the heart of everyone, maybe not like an Uttama Adhikari, but at least he can see that uh, in different religious principle, like in the different religion, 
that they also uh, um, that they also worship uh, the Lord. Okay. Not only in the temple. So he, he will worship the Lord, right? He will offer his worship to yes. the Supreme Lord. And what about the devotees? How will he relate to devotees? He will relate to the uh, devotee according to their uh, platform, according to their uh, stage. He will relate uh, accordingly and he will respect the devotees. Mm -hmm. Have some friendly dealing with the devotees, right? Yes. Definitely, there'll be friendly dealings there. And then what about the ordinary people? With ordinary people, if uh, they are interested in Krishna consciousness, he can give uh, information and he will preach to them, but to the one who envious, he will, uh, what to say, he will avoid. Okay. So those people who are interested in Krishna consciousness, he'll give them mercy, right? Yes. He'll yes. show compassion on them. And he'll yes. give mercy and try to help them and encourage them in Krishna consciousness. And those who are not devotees, who are not interested, maybe they're atheist, maybe they're even offend offensive. So what will we do with them? He will uh, avoid, but uh, it doesn't mean like uh, he just like completely avoid it, like just maintain outward relationships depend on whether he is in, like in the job place on your relative just as much as needed for the relationship just like outward relationship but not like a close relationship well if he wants he can he can just simply avoid them he can just simply stay away from them he doesn't yes. he doesn't need to even worry about <laughs> because you know they're they're nasty people, they're not friend. they're not very nice people. So I'd better just stay away from them, leave them alone, ignore them. Yes, Maharaj. Right? Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so described here from 11th Canto Srimad Bhagavatam, the vision of the second class devotee gives love to the Lord, friendly to all devotees, merciful to the neophytes and ignorant people. The intermediate devotee neglects those who are envious of devotional service. So four, in other words, Madhyam devotee, he has to make distinction. He makes distinction. Who is a devotee, who is innocent, who is not. Right? He's making distinction. One time Srila Prabhupada was doing a program it was in Indore, in India, there, in the city of Indore. And Srila Prabhupada was preaching str strongly the message of Bhagavad Gita. So Prabhupada was critical of some materialists and atheists and, you know, people who were not devotees. So one man who was listening got upset and said, your Guru Maharaj is very critical. He says, you know, he's very, he, 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 he says so many nasty things about people because they're not devotees. And he said, your Guru Maharaj should see everyone equally. So somehow Prabhupada heard about this. Prabhupada heard this man was saying that Prabhupada should see everyone equally. But Prabhupada said, well, I am not on that level, <laughs> Prabhupada said to the man. He said, I'm not on that level. But, but, you know, the man said, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Samo ham sarva bhute shu, name drishosti napriya. I envy no one, I'm equal to everyone. He said, you should, and he said, Samo pandita darshana, a learned person sees everyone equal. And Prabhupada said, I am not on that level. <laughs> so, Prabhupada uh, was uh, coming down to the intermediate level for the sake of preaching. Because if you're on the topmost level, 
it's difficult to preach. You can't really preach because you see everybody equally. We'll hear about the topmost level in a minute. But anyway, it was an interesting example. Prabhupada was preaching there. And so the man was saying, he was critical. And so the devotees talked to him and the devotees explained to him about Srila Prabhupada, how Srila Prabhupada was preaching the message of the Bhagavad Gita all over the world. So when the man heard that, then the man changed his mind. He said, oh, then this is very wonderful. He thought, your Guru Maharaj is doing such a wonderful service, preaching the Bhagavad Gita all over the world, everywhere. That is real equality, preaching the message of the Bhagavad Gita around the world. And the man actually understood Prabhupada's vision of equality. To give Krishna consciousness to those who want it, and ignoring those people who are envious of devotees. Okay, so we heard about the vision of the Madhyama devotee. Now we'll hear about the, the most expansive vision, the Uttama. Who would like to tell us the vision of the Uttama? Can we have a volunteer? Sparat. Hare Krishna, Hare Yes, okay, you want to speak? What's your name? Manishi Das Maharaj. Uh, Manishi, Manishi Das Prabhu. He is Manishi. You're supposed to put your hands up, but still. Yes, already done, Maharaj. Yeah, I know, but you wait for me to call you, not that you come in. <laughs> okay, anyway, go ahead, speak. Tell okay, me. Sila. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, because uh, Uttama Tikari is. Uh, he has a uh, unflinching feet, not uh, unflinching feet. So uh, that's why his vision is he see Krishna everywhere. Sees Krishna everywhere. Yes, sir. So, so what does he do? So he very affectionate to one and all, Maharaj. Huh? Say that again. He affectionate to to all living in entity. He's affectionate to everyone. Yes, ma. How does he show his affection? To show this uh, affection, something he going down to Madhyama Adhikari level. <laughs> So to show his affection on the Uttama platform, he cannot. He has to come down to Madhyam to show his affection. Maybe, Master Marat. <laughs> yeah. That was our, our thing, Marat. <laughs> okay. Anybody else would like to contribute here to describe more about the Uttama? Yes, Marat. Narayana Mataji. Narayana Mataji. Hare Krishna, uh, Maharaj. Yes. The, tell me so about the Uttama. About the Uttama Adhikari, I want to add uh, the explanation. Um, uh, maybe for all the devotees, maybe just a little uh, to become Uttama Adhikari, because uh, this uh, devotee is very serious and follow uh, all the principles uh, properly and then chant the holy name with Japa Mala until rounds and more and always think about uh, how to uh, spread the uh, Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna, thank you Maharaj. Okay, and you know, the point about uh, follow the regulative principles and chant the holy name, that's done also by the Kanista and the Madhyam, these things, you know, that can be done also there. But your point about thinking about how to spread Krishna consciousness everywhere, that is an interesting point. Anyway, let's see here, we have a quote from the Srimad Bhagavatam describing a person on the Uttama, a person advanced in devotional service, 
sees within everything the soul of souls, Krishna. Okay, so we, Manisi got this point that Krishna, he sees Krishna everywhere. Consequently, he always sees the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the cause of all causes and understands that all things are situated in him. Okay, so that's the vision of the Uttama Adhikari. He sees Krishna everywhere, so is he going to preach? What's he going to be doing? Generally someone on the topmost level, they won't preach. They simply do their own bhajan because they think everyone is already engaged in Krishna's service. They see everyone acting according to their, you know, nature, they're all under the control of Krishna and so everything which happens is Krishna's arrangement. So they don't take the time to preach. So we'll talk about this a bit more later. We're going, first of all, qualification for seeing Krishna everywhere. What would be the qualification? You want to have that qualification? The Uttama Adhikari sees Krishna everywhere. What is the qualification? Have you heard the tape? Prabhupada said there's only one qualification to see God. What's the qualification? Do we have hands? We have Radha Kishori Maharaji. Radha Kishori Maharaji there? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, if you're situated in complete uh, spiritual platform, then only uh, we can see uh, Krishna everywhere. Um, okay. There's a verse actually in the Shastra which describes to see Krishna everywhere. You know the verse? Well, there's several verses. In Bhagavad Gita, you've got some also. Anyway, here's the one which Prabhupada often used from Brahma Samhita, right? There's only one qualification to see God, Prabhupada, and then the Premanjana Charita Bhakti Vilo Chanina, right? I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is Krishna, Shamsundar himself with inconceivable, innumerable attributes, whom the pure devotee sees within the heart of hearts, with the eye of devotion, tinged with the salve of love." So the pure devotees, they see Krishna in their heart, because their eyes have that devotion. We have to anoint our eyes with that devotion this, and the devotion, that, that is the love. We have to have that loving feeling for the Lord. Now, there's different levels of devotees also in terms of chanting the holy name. I think, what was it, Radhika, what's her name, Radhika? Radha Kishori Maharaji. Right? Right. Did you tell us, did you tell us the other, did you tell us, why is that echo there? Okay, so Mahaprabhu gave instructions to the people, the devotees from Kulina Gram. Three levels of devotees determined by how they chant the holy name. Madhiji will tell us. Ready? Yes? Uh, the first level is uh, somebody who's even chanted the holy name once is considered devotee and somebody who's chanting the name, second level is somebody who's chanting the name of uh, Krishna all the time and the third level is uh, by seeing that person the other people uh, chant the name of Krishna. Okay. Yes. First of all, it says, one is chanting Hare Krishna mantra, it's understood to be a Vaishnava. Therefore, should offer all respects to him. 
Just like in this verse it is said, Krishneti yasha giritam manasadriyeta. We should mentally honor a devotee who chants the holy name. And Srila Prabhupada describes somebody who is initiated into chanting, they're initiated into chanting the holy name, we should respect them. They're chanting the holy name, they've taken Vaishnava, Diksha, they have initiation. So we should offer our respects to him. Somebody may, you say, as Mataji said, somebody's chanting, just be, he's chanting only one time, just began to chant. So like that, someone's began to chant, but still they're considered a devotee because they've begun to chant the holy name. And someone else is chanting the holy name regularly with great faith and very regular, very seriously, doing good sadhana. And someone else is on the topmost platform that they get other people to chant the holy name. Simply by seeing them makes other people chant. So different levels of devotees decided by how they chant the holy name. person who is always chanting the holy name is to be considered a first class devotee. Our duty is to serve his lotus feet. This is Chaitanya Charitamrita. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur says, any Vaishnava who is constantly chanting should be considered to have attained the second platform of Vaishnavism. Such a devotee is superior to a neophyte Vaishnava who has just learned to chant the holy name. Neophyte devotee simply tries to chant the holy name, whereas the advanced devotee is accustomed to chanting and takes pleasure in it. So we can understand what level we are on, whether we are Kanista or Madhyam or Uttama, by our mood in chanting the holy name. Are we taking pleasure in chanting the holy name? Are we eager to wake up in the morning and chant? Or do we think, oh, where's my beats? Oh, I didn't chant yet. <laughs> you know, different levels of devotees. Somebody's neophyte, somebody's madhyam, and somebody's on the topmost platform. So, on the basis of how we chant the holy name. Very important part of our sadhana, the chanting of the holy name. An inter intermediate devotee is greatly attracted to chanting the holy name. By chanting, he is elevated to the platform of love. If one chants the holy name with great attachment, he can understand his position as an eternal servant of the spiritual master, other Vaishnavas and Krishna himself. Thus, the intermediate Vaishnava considers himself Krishna Das, Krishna's servant. Right? We want to become Krishna Das. Oh, <laughs> from Jaiva Dharma. <laughs> Some questions? Let's have some questions, yeah. Uh, quickly, could you just uh, go back to the previous slide? What was the reference for the verse? It's Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, chapter 16, text number 72, purport. Thank you, Maharaj. First question, Maharaj, is from Ananta Pandit Prabhu. I would like to ask, Okay, we have a question here from Ananta Pandit Prabhu. I would like to ask, how should be our attitude towards the person who donate to our temple, the temple donor? What should be our attitude towards temple donors? So Prabhu is asking, what should be our attitude towards temple donors? People who are supporting the temple. What should be our attitude to them? Well, Prabhupada writes in the purport of text number four about how people are donating to our movement and how, you know, this is, they're giving donations, 
we should recognize that they're having love and respect for our movement and we should respect them and appreciate them, show them. Prabhupada explains, he said, we don't have much to give them in return. They may give n nice contributions. What, what can we give in return? We offer some prasadam, we give some kind words. When they come to the temple, we take them to see the deities. It's very nice if you have a deity garland, you can put the gar give them a garland. It's a very nice thing to do. Yeah, next question. What will happen if we give prasadam to a neighbor who is not yet a devotee? Is it also considered the dati? Of course, yes, it's the dati. We're giving, offering, giving something, gift. So, yes, we want to do this. We, this is our duty as devotees, to distribute prasadam, particularly have neighbors. You want to give them prasadam. You want to encourage them to appreciate Krishna consciousness, to have a favorable mood towards Krishna's devotees. And so you give them some prasadam, they'll be happy. I remember one time in New York, the devotees told how they'd given, they'd given this man simply wonderful. They said, oh, you gave him simply wonderful? Prabhupada said, he will become simply wonderful. <laughs> Prabhupada had made this sweet ball, you know, with the powdered sugar and milk powder and butter and, and he asked the devotees, what, what, what do you think of it? And the devotees said, oh Prabhupada, it's simply wonderful. And Prabhupada said, all right. He said, that's the name, simply wonderful. So the sweet ball got the name simply wonderful. And you know, you give it to someone, they, they become simply wonderful by eating simply wonderful. Can you say this again? Regarding the level of devotees that is changeable. I think he is talking about the Uttam Madhyam and uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, previously you said that uh, it's not a fixed like three division like that. One could, uh, at this minute he is a Kanichta, but maybe in the next minute he might be a Madhyama like that. So it looks like it's it could change like that. Uh -huh. uh, so is that uh, is that has a, any relation to caused by the three modes of nature, the, the change like that? Well, the three modes of nature, devotional service is meant to be transcendental. If we're doing, if we're actually engaged in devotional service, we should be on the transcendental platform. It shouldn't really be the influence of the modes of nature. But it may be, it may be that we're, you know, because sometimes devotional service does become influenced by the modes of nature. Then it's not pure devotion anymore, of course, if we're under the influence of the modes of nature. Devotional service in passion and in ignorance or even in goodness. We want, Rupa Goswami always wants pure, pure devotional service, to come to the platform of pure service, to transcend the modes. And if we're devotees, the devotees are supposed to be on the transcendental platform. We're meant to have transcended the material energy. So our position, we don't see anywhere that it's due to the modes of nature, but it's due to Faith 
and knowledge, and we heard also chanting the holy name, these different things. So the, the attitude more than the modes of nature. So someone's chanted the holy name one time, but they have a very bad character before they chanted and even after they chanted. So how should we deal with them? How should we respect them? Well, we should encourage them to try to chant more, try to get them to chant more, or at least, you know, we should feel grateful that he chanted the holy name, that his spiritual life has begun. We should think, oh, very nice, he's, he chanted the holy name, he's begun his spiritual life. I remember that pastime about Gadarha Das, an associate of Lord Chaitanya, that he went into the Muslim ruler's home in the middle of the night, and he told the Muslim ruler, I want to get you to chant the holy name. And the Muslim ruler got up from his bed and said, oh, Gadarha, go home, I'll chant Hare Krishna another time. And Gadarha said, oh, wonderful, you chanted the holy name. <laughs> so like that, if you get a, the most demonic person to chant Hare Krishna, it's wonderful, very good, you should rejoice. You should feel very happy that our movement is successful, that even nasty demonic people with the worst mentality are chanting the holy name. Gradually they will be changed. Last question. Somebody, you go, to, you go to some a devotee is describing, Shankar Prabhu is describing that he's not yet second initiated, but sometimes he yeah. goes to people's homes and people give him gifts like a chadar or some cloth or something. So is it wrong for him to accept these things? Well, I don't think it's wrong because you're going to use these things in the service of Krishna. And you've gone to their home, you give them some time, you spend some time with them and give them association and preach to them. And they like to give you some present, it's very nice, it's a loving exchange. I, I explained how Prabhupada said, it's a duty to accept. Somebody gives you a gift, you should accept it. Now generally what happens, even somebody gives you something you don't really want, you should accept it. Later on you can always give it to somebody else. But if you accept it and then immediately give it away to somebody else, it's not very nice. But if they give you something, you should accept it and you should show appreciation, you should be very grateful, and later on you can always give it to somebody else, somebody more need, a needy person, somebody or somebody you may consider even more worthy, you may like to give it to. But it, you should accept. Somebody offers you something, it's your duty to accept it. You may not be second initiated, but you're doing the work of a brahmana, you're following the principles, you're preaching. That's a brahmana duty. So they give you a present, you accept it, later on you can always give it away to someone else. Mm -hmm. And one question, Maharaj. From Gita and Mulekha Mataji, newly wed daughter-in-law comes and cooks, but she is materialistic. We offer to the deities what to do, should we eat or not? So Mary is saying uh, her daughter-in-law comes to the home and cooks, but she's materialistic, she's not a devotee, 
but they offer it to the deity, so is it all right? Well, she's not a devotee, she doesn't chant, not initiated, it's not very good. Usually we wouldn't let such people cook for the deity, in the temple at least. It's a question of what standards you're going to have. If you're going to allow your daughter to come there and cook, you should tell her, look, if you want to cook, you want us to eat, you have to sit and chant first of all. You first of all sit here and chant, then you can cook. If you're not willing to do that, you say, then look, we will cook, you don't bother cooking. You have to be clear about your standards. Yeah, what, what kind of standards are you going to have? If you're, if you're happy, if you're willing to accept her food, then it's, your, then it's your fault. But you can't complain. You have to make clear what, what particular standards you're going to practice Krishna consciousness on. Now for some people, they won't worry about it. But if you're asking me the question, I'd say, well, it's not very good. I wouldn't like to eat her food. You, you want to eat it, it's up to you. Okay. And Dina was just looking one to ask a question. I think the translator is speaking Indonesian. Okay. So the translator could translate. Okay, ask. Dina Vatsa is going to speak in Basa and we'll have it translated. The question, the last question. Here also, time is also over. Really? Yeah. Do you know about self question, Prabhu? Yes, I have translated for the devotees. Okay. Uh, his question is how can we or how to associate with the three levels of devotees, the Kanista Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari and Uttama Adhikari? How to associate with the different well Yes. It's a question you have to we have to consider where are we? What level are we on? And we have to associate accordingly. If we are Kanista, <laughs> you know, of course, we have to, re devotee will respect everyone. A devotee offers respects to everyone. I was with Prabhupada one time in a temple in London, a Hindu temple in London. They were worshipping Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. And I remember Srila Prabhupada saying, a devotee of Krishna not only offers respects to Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, a devotee of Krishna will offer their respect even to a tiny insect that bears, that, like an ant, they will offer respects to it. And so different levels of devotee, Kanista, Madhyam, Uttama, we will respect them according the information is given in the verse. Somebody's began to chant the holy name, we will mentally honor them. Somebody's engaged in worshipping the deity, they've undergone a spiritual initiation and they're engaged in worshipping the deity. We offer obeisances to them and we associate with and faithfully serve that person who is fixed in undeviating devotional service and is freed of the propensity to criticize others. So different ways of association, right? One way you mentally honor someone, began to chant. They may be, of course, they're going to be Kanista, right? New devotee, they just began to chant, don't know much. Someone else is worshiping the deity. They may also be Kanista, they may not be Kanista. You don't know. So we have, you have to consider. You have to, we will, but we will, we should offer obeisances to them because they're worshipping the deity. And somebody else, well, we have to hear, are they, if they're actually Uttama, we should associate with and serve, associate with them and serve them. Giving service, mahatsevam dwara mahorva muktes, right? By serving the great souls opens the doors to liberation. Very powerful. Get a chance to serve the devotees. The servants of the devotees are the most fortunate because they're serving the pure devotee, serving the great soul. They're so fortunate. So if you can get to serve a devotee who served a great devotee, very fortunate. So we try to serve great devotees who had 
served, you know, people like Hari Sori Prabhu, who served Srila Prabhupada, uh, Shruta Kirti Prabhu, served Prabhu, Prabhupada's servant. These kind of people, they, they give Prabhupada direct service. Okay, we're over time. We have to stop here. So, we'll, we'll take them to, if you want, and you know, the three more questions, if you like to stay on, we can go on because it's evening and, okay, what's the question? No, no relationship. There's no relationship between three levels of chanting the holy name and three levels of devotees. And there's a question by Adi Prabhu. How should one respect a person born in the holy dham, but they are smoking and not chanting? How we should how should we respect someone born in the holy dham but they're smoking and not chanting? We honor all the residents of the dham. Because somehow or other they had that opportunity, they had that piety to be born in the Holy Dham. So it's offensive to offend anybody who is uh, a resident or a resident of the Dham. Even the animals, we should respect them. Some, how can we recognize somebody who comes down from the Uttama Adhikari platform to the Majjama Adhikari platform? How do we know? We'll, we will know when they go back up to the Uttama platform. <laughs> right? It's not important. We should respect the Madhyam and the Uttama. They're both, the, the Madhyam is the, 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 the real platform of Krishna consciousness, the preaching for preaching. We should be on that intermediate platform. We should come to that platform for preaching. Uttama platform, yes, Uttama Adhikari, Prabhupada always thinking how to spread Krishna consciousness. That is also Uttama Adhikari. But Madhyam Adhikari is also thinking about that too. So not a big difference really between the Madhyam and Uttama if they're both preaching. Okay, so we will stop here. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Now next week, we, next week we have... Thank you so much, Maharaj. Ki Jai. I'm trying to close this. I can, you know, it's not closing for what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Can you help me here with this computer? I don't know what's happened. It got stuck, yeah. Oh, now the meeting is disconnected. Okay. Meeting has been ended. Meeting has been ended, so I don't need to close or leave anything. You can still close, Maharaj, just to be sure. So if you do quit, you know how uh, command Q. Where? Yeah? Command Q, so you're on Zoom, right? Yeah. That doesn't quite quit. So if you. Look.